Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Friday, April 5th, and then we'll see how things look for Monday, April 8th. We had a pretty good bounce. We were able to recapture a lot of what was given up on Thursday, but we're really at a tipping point right now. There are some things that are quite positive, but we're seeing some weakness continue to creep in as we go through the charts. But we have regained the 20 period moving average. We're not really looking extreme positive right now in the short term. And things, you could take it either way at this point. We could go up from here and regain more of a positive stance, or we could see a decline and turn more negative. There's not going to be any economic reports that are released in Monday's session. Even with the employment situation report that was well received, we saw below average volume. So we'll have to see in Monday's session, are we still going to stay with this general below average volume move as the market tries to decide what to do? We might see a lot of sideways action, but we'll be looking for a break to the upside or to the downside. Before I get started, there are two videos right now on the YouTube and Rumble channels talking about the proposed program. I will be adding with additional videos to explain more of the program. Also, I do a number of different videos each week. The backbone of what I do is the daily video. I see the other videos that are listed here more as supplemental videos. I really considered redoing the What to Watch video for Friday's session. I wanted to see what the employment situation was going to look like. And since that was well received, it kind of kicked us back up. And we're, like I said, at a tipping point right now. So I will be updating that for Monday's session. Also, when you do comment, please feel free. Whether you agree, disagree, you like my approach, you don't like my approach, I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with what I do. And I've been doing it for decades with a lot of success. So that doesn't bother me. But if I respond to your comment and then you respond back, there can be quite a delay there. And I don't want you to think that I'm not responding. It's just because I don't see it. All right, let's go back and talk about what happened. We did have a higher open. There was positive reaction to the employment situation report in that it showed that things are still looking solid and not necessarily too solid. So we did have a higher open. And prices rose up above the daily pivot at 51.83 as the day went on. We kept going up and we hit resistance at R1 at 52.21. So we were able to get back above the 5200 level. And then we ended up closing above 5200. We were up 1.11%. So we got a big chunk of that back that was lost on Thursday. But we were below average with volume. We are... We're positive if you want to take everything together because our long and intermediate term trends, they're still looking good. We're switching back to looking on a trending basis, more positive in the short term. But some of our indicators are just not really showing any real strength right now. And there are a whole list of different geopolitical events that are happening. A lot of this is going on in the Middle East. We've got earthquakes happening in New Jersey. These things don't really impact the market, but they do impact everyday life. Some comments. Mega Caps did outperform. They had a pretty good day in Friday's session. We were able to regain the 20 period moving averages for the S&P. Oil is still going up, and that could be putting some pressure on things. Remember, we have to look at the context. Is oil going up because these companies are making more money? That could help stocks. Oil's going up right now because of geopolitical concerns, and that puts a little bit more fear into the market. All the sectors were down in Thursday's session. Well, every sector was up in Friday's session. And we just have our long-term moving averages right now, the 150 and the 200 that are extreme. That's showing longer-term good momentum, but they're still giving us quite high readings. The parabolic SAR is still negative, though. That has not switched back to positive. And we're still trying to wonder where are we with this scenario that the Fed is likely done raising rates and possibly cutting rates three times in 2024. That's also been put into question. We had some Fed governors speaking that has thrown that a bit into doubt. The market may have been taking that a little bit too much for granted. 
So there were some things coming out as far as statements. Now we're going to get the FOMC meeting minutes in the upcoming week, and the market's going to be diving into those to try to find any kind of hidden meaning there. The dollar was up and interest rates were down, and we closed at 4.38%. Actually, that should be up. The 10-year yield ended up finishing higher at 4.38%. So we had stocks going up and interest rates going up. I didn't change that here. The yield curves that we've been following are still inverted. Sentiment did tick up. We're at 61, so we're positive where we had been at 58. We are still negative with our trend. The red line is still below the green line. That hasn't turned up yet. The ADX is still weakening, and we're getting closer to that 20 level. With the update, the bias is positive, and the last number of days together, I'm switching now to mixed. We had some really good up days, but we had that really strong down day on Thursday too, and that's really making things chop more or less sideways. The economic reports came out. We had the non-farm payrolls, much stronger than expected. At 303,000, they expected 200,000, showing real strength in the employment situation. Last time it was at 270,000. That was revised, but not as much as we've been seeing before. Private payrolls came in at 232,000, also much greater than the 160,000 they had expected. Last time we had 207,000. The unemployment rate did tick down to 3.8%. That's what they expected. It came down from 3.9%. The average hourly earnings, this is more of the inflationary part of the report. And it came in as expected, up 0.3%. And it was up 0.2% last time. The work week came in up a little bit, 34.4. They expected 34.3. Last time it was 34.3. Here's some charts, and I don't show the payroll charts because because of the skew from the COVID lockdowns, they're pretty much useless. Here's a, a longer term chart looking at the initial claims and the continuing claims that we had on Thursday, and then the updated unemployment rate in Friday session. Here's a more of a blow up of that same thing. There is a lag here because the initial claims and continuing claims, they're seen as more right now and even somewhat of a leading indicator where the unemployment rate is looking back. Here's the hourly earnings year over year where we're still a little bit above the 4% and it's coming down and the market likes that from more of an inflationary standpoint. And then the change month over month did show a real increase in the jobs. Some Isabel Net blog charts. This is showing the deviation of earnings either above or below the long-term growth trend. We're right about in this red area now. So we're ab above the longer term growth trend and they're thinking it's gonna continue to go up here. And that just means that we're deviating away from statistical norms. Then we show the forward-looking PE. And I'll be going over this again in the intermarket analysis video. And it, we've been showing, I've been showing like three different charts this week, and we're getting slightly different numbers depending on what you look at. When you just take the Magnificent Seven, we're at 30 times earnings. Now, you could say, whoa, look at that. That's really expensive. But these are big companies that are really growing and are really leading the economy. And so a lot of investors, they're okay with having a stock be that expensive for right now where we compare it to about 21 times earnings. So we're above that 20 level for the S&P. And then you take the rest of the stocks that are in the S&P 500 and they're at about 19 times earnings. And this adjusts every day as earnings reports are revised and then the price of the S&P goes up and down and that causes an adjustment. Then, then here, according to Deutsche Bank, we see overall earnings beats in line with the historical average at about 5%. They were looking a little more optimistic. We are coming down, but this green line is more of the norm for right now. And mutual fund and ETF either inflows or outflows, where we have non-equity, we're seeing money coming in here, and then US equity also, and bonds, and then a lot of money is into money markets. And this is why I picked up on this chart here. This doesn't, mean necessarily that there's money sitting on the sidelines waiting to come into the stock market. That could be part of it, 
But folks are taking their money out of banks where they're getting very low returns in their savings accounts and CDs and so forth. And they're putting them into money markets because they're getting a better return. And that's as far as they want to take the money. They may not want to necessarily put it into the stock market right now. So we're still seeing quite a growth. Then rising CEO confidence points to buyback rebound. Now, this is one of the areas that's really been supporting the market, whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing, moral, immoral. A lot of the support is coming from companies buying back their own stock. When they buy it back, that pushes prices higher. And when they buy it back, that means there's f fewer shares out in the marketplace. And that makes them more precious. And that tends to really boost stocks up as well. And so we see confidence going up here with the blue line and then the buybacks on a year over year basis. That's also going in as well. And this is what we typically see in a more positive economic climate, positive stock market climate. You see CEOs feeling better about things. This is how they're feeling six months looking out. And then that tends to really help support stocks. Then the non-farm established payrolls, this came out before the report was released and it's still showing good healthy growth here. NFP, that means non-farm payrolls. So we're seeing a lot of jobs being created, not necessarily in an inflationary way. The work week is still pretty solid. The un <clears throat> unemployment rate, even though that's quite a manipulated number, that's actually coming down. So that's looking pretty solid, but not necessarily overly solid. And that's what the market picked up on in Friday's session. Didn't really find anything on Twitter. A lot of people saying things, but nothing really all that useful. We're wondering, okay, this will probably be updated over the weekend. These are the cycles where we see some potential strength going into about the 10th or so. So that would be what, Wednesday? with this cycle pattern. And then we see some weakness going into the latter part of April and then a bounce going about a month out into the latter part of May. Here's our intraday chart where we didn't have a gap. The market was a little bit apprehensive. The futures were up before the report was released and they just kind of stayed up, but we ended up having a positive open, but not a real gap. We were able to get above the daily pivot. And with the big down day we saw on Thursday, it took quite a bit to get back to the pivot level. But then we just kept going. We went all the way up to R1. That's where we hit overhead resistance. We're back above 5,200. We did pull back, but then saw some buying going into the close. So we didn't close at the high, but you know it was a pretty positive day. We closed close to the high for the day. Here's our intraday chart. This shows that we were pretty positive, even the initial overnight session. And then we stayed that way as Europe opened. There was a little bit of gyrating going around because there's the initial reaction to a major economic report. And then there's the counter reaction. Sometimes it goes in the same way as the initial reaction, but quite often we'll see it go in the opposite direction. Same thing happens with Fed announcements too. Here's where we really shot up after the open, gave some of that back, and then are closing for the weekend. And we are seeing some improvement here with the growth to value. The blue line is on top. It's above the red line. Both were up, but growth was up better on an intraday basis or stronger, I should say. The growth to value ratio showing some improvement here. So this is looking more solid when we look internally, at least at the intraday charts. End of day, we were up quite a bit more with growth with the large caps. We were up with value too, but a lot less. Up more with the mid caps and up more with the small caps. So this is helping things a little bit. But we're just ticking back up a little bit with the small cap growth to value ratio. We want to see this really going back up. Also with the mid caps, a bit of a turn back up after it had been declining, showing slight improvement. And we're also turning back up with the S&P growth to value ratio, but we want to see this starting to go back up. It seems like we're going back into that previous scenario where we want growth to outperform value, where it had been trying to shift over where value and growth could both be doing well at the same time because the Fed was going to come in and, and definitely cut interest rates. Now that that's a bit in question, we're going back to this growth versus value type of struggle. And if you look back here, when we hit the bottom in October of 2023, and this ratio was going down, but the S&P was going up, 
that was the new scenario that the market is trying to adopt, that the Fed's going to be cutting rates, that interest rates are going to be coming down, that inflation is under control. And we can see this ratio really declining in that kind of an environment. We were trying to develop that lately, but we haven't quite shifted over to that, at least yet. Looking at discretionary versus staples, still in a longer term uptrend, not really outperforming currently. Tesla is still under a lot of pressure. Large cap growth was up almost 1.5%, still looking in a solid uptrend. Looking at our trend, though, we're continuing to decline. We're still above 20 with our ADX, but we're below the moving average and declining. The red line, even though it came down, is still above the green line. So now we default to negative. We've also gone into a non-trending environment as far as the ADX is concerned in the short term. We're below 20 now, the red line coming down, but still above the green line. So this is shifting a little bit more negative to a non-trending environment. And we were below average with volume. We're just not seeing a real above, real robust volume. And it's a little bit concerning that in Thursday's session, we saw an above average volume day on a pretty significant down move. Sentiment, this was updated a few days ago, still coming in at a very high reading at 4.43%. We get nervous when it's above three. Now it's above four. This is likely to come down since we ended up being negative on the week. When we look at the VIX, we tick down a little bit with the line chart as well as the bar chart, but volatility has really been picking up. We're also seeing an increase in the volatility of the VIX. We were getting very, very low readings and it almost can't help but go back up. And usually when that happens, that means stocks are declining. We're seeing volatility still at pretty high levels compared to what they had been. We're still barely extreme positive with the VIX, looking at the RSI 9. We went extreme after Thursday's session. We pulled back. We're just a little bit under 70. 70 is kind of the, the benchmark here. We're just a little bit below that, but showing that the VIX is really moving pretty fast currently. We're also going back up with the momentum of the VIX as measured by the MACD. These charts were not updated. I'm not quite sure if the equity put call ratio is going up or down. The last reading that we had had it going up, which tends to be more negative for stocks. We came down a little bit with the volatility risk premium. We're just at the upper end of this band. So with the update, this did pull back slightly, but it's still higher than the readings we've been seeing lately. We did get consumer sentiment, came in at 79.4. We compare that with the two-year treasury yield, which has been going back up. People are feeling a little more confident about things currently. Our advanced decline line studies, we did turn back up based on price and volume, still looking pretty solid in the longer term. We're well above the moving averages. And we saw more new highs than new lows, but we're seeing a drop off in the new highs. So we're trailing off with the five period and the 10 period. We were able to get back above zero with our short blue line here. That's the 19 day exponential moving average. And we turned back up with the red 39 period exponential moving average. So volume is back to looking more positive. We're just about on the moving average now with the accumulation distribution. This is a smart money indicator and it's pretty much right on the moving average. This is a little bit of a concern. With the update, we actually saw the chicken money flow turn back down. This is also a smart money indicator. So we're turning back and looking a little bit more negative with the chicken oscillator. We were looking more positive after Thursday. Now we're looking more negative after Friday. Looking at our advanced decline line studies, we were up with the NYSE common stock, S&P mid caps, small caps are trying to bounce off the moving average. Here's our daily chart. We were able to get back up to this pivot point. That's the positive side of things. We did see the big decline, but the fact that we're recapturing some of this lost territory is a good thing. Down below, we were below average with volume, which is rather strange when you have the biggest economic report of the month. We were able to recapture the 20 period moving averages. This is quite positive. We lost them after Thursday. We recaptured them after Friday. So on a trending basis, the short-term trend is looking better. We look at our open high, low, close study here. We're coming back up. We're still at the highest end of this mini rainbow, but this is showing some improvement. The rainbow itself continues to go up. 
And we're just keeping an eye on the 50 period moving averages in case we start to see some more weakness. This might be the next level that we shoot for for support. We did recapture the midpoint with the Bollinger Bands. That's positive. And we're coming back up, but now the lines are turning down with our 20 period double and triple exponential moving average study. If we could get back above this, that would turn the short term even more positive. We ticked up slightly, but we're not extreme with the 20. We turned up with the 50, and we're turning back up and not extreme with the 200 period exponential moving average study. We're just a little bit negative with the force index. We had come all the way down to the Keltner band. We bounced back up off of that. So this is shifting back more to neutral. We're not extreme. The first time pretty much in 2024 that this has not been included on an extreme positive list. In the short term, we're turning a little more positive, coming back above the midpoint. We're still declining in the intermediate term, and we're no longer extreme in the long-term stochastics study. We were able to get back above the midpoint with our standard deviations chart. We're in the plus one channel. Intermediate term, starting to look a little more positive with the balance of power, crossing back above zero. And this is redrawing again, and we're turning to the darker blue currently with the go-no-go -no -go system. And the midpoint for the highest high value is flattening out, but we were able to close back above that midpoint. We're still looking a little more negative with the TTM squeeze. It's the darker blue and it's continuing to decline. Looking at our 50 period double and triple exponential moving averages, we're still below this. And the longer we stay below it, the more these lines are likely to actually roll over. So this is intermediate term. We want to keep an eye on this one. We declined with the ease of movement, but we're still above zero. We were flat with the Arun, so no change there. After being extreme negative with the S&P McClellan oscillator, we did bounce back up. We're still negative, and that's going to keep our summation index declining, but this is showing some improvement. So we're going down based on price and also declining based on volume. We're negative here with the NYSE McClellan oscillator, but it bounced back up. But it's negative because it's below zero, so we're declining based on price and volume with the summation index for the NYSE. Looking a little more negative here, we're really declining with the Swanland Trading Oscillator based on price. A little bit better when we look at this based on volume, but they're both turning negative. And now we're starting to shift more negative with our oscillators. The PMO is now below its moving average and declining after being extreme positive. We're declining a little bit more fierce based on price. We are declining based on volume, but it's not as intense. And we bounce back up a little bit with the PMOs that are rising, but almost getting to an extreme negative reading. The buy signals are decreasing and we're rolling over and still just barely extreme positive with the PMOs that are above zero. We've gone from being negative back over to positive with the Elder's Impulse system for the S&P. The dots are still on top for the parabolic SAR, so that's negative. The slope, which is our shortest term oscillator, turning back up slightly, but declining and below the moving average. The MACD continues to decline below its moving average. So we're looking more negative on a momentum basis when we take all of our oscillators together. We were able to recapture the 20 period moving average. We did tick up just a little bit with the bullish percent index, but we're declining after dropping below 70. We want to see this really turn and go back up for it to be more positive. We were down just a little bit with the NYSE bullish percent index, and we're looking a little more negative with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. We're below 50 and declining, so this is negative. We did cross back above 50 with the money flow, so that's turning more positive. The ultimate oscillator did turn up, but it's still below 50, so it's negative but showing an improvement here. We're turning back up with the vortex, but we've still been seeing a real trailing off with the green line. And we're turning back up and looking a little more positive with the RSI, both based on 14 periods and nine. We're above 50 with both. We're still above the moving average with on balance volume. We're crossing just barely back above positive here with the stocks inside the S&P that are above their 20 period moving averages. Also a little bit of a tick up with those stocks above their 50 period moving average and turning up. And still showing pretty good longer term momentum with the 100 period moving average study and flat with the 200 period moving average study and still giving us a fairly high reading after it had become quite extreme. 
the Coptic curve is still looking negative. So momentum wise, we're seeing more negativity because these are moving average base and these are looking for flow either up or down. And since we were going sideways and then we had that big down day on Thursday, that's shifting our momentum over more to negative. The Sean trend meter did tick up and it's no longer extreme. And I want to keep this here just in case we see some more weakness. Have the Fibonacci levels redrawn from the all-time high? We still have a ways to go to get the 38.2% retracement level. Still looking a little more negative with the hike in Ashi with the black candles. We're pointing up, but negative with the Kegi chart, but it's red, so it's negative. The Ranko chart, this is just, I, who knows, but it's actually looking a little more negative with a red box. And the three-line break is also looking a little more negative. Long term, we're still above this long term resistance level, wondering if it's going to be support. We haven't really tested that yet, but the longer we can stay above this longer term, that is still positive. We're still extreme with our 115 200 period moving averages. And we're looking a little better here when we look at the Keller market model across all the different indexes and time frames. We're still negative in the short term with the small caps and the NASDAQ 100. And we're looking negative based on price with volumes across all time frames. Commodities are still looking negative longer term. Pretty much everything was positive in Friday's session. Canada, yeah, they're just partying it up there, eh? And oil is really showing some strength, which in this context is actually more negative for the market. The equal weight is pretty much doing okay when compared to the S&P 500 weighted index. So we were up a little bit with the mega caps outperforming slightly with our ratio. We were able to get right back up to the 50 period moving average with the Dow. So that's more intermediate term and we're right at this pivot point currently. So we're, we're holding up for right now. And the diamonds though, they still remain negative with the elders impulse system. And we're coming right back up to the pivot point with the NASDAQ still above the 50 period moving average. So you can see this tipping point Conclusion that I'm coming to. Also, back up to the pivot point for the NASDAQ 100, still above the 50 period moving average. This ended up providing a bounce. We came down to the 50 period and then bounced up off of that in Friday's session. And we've switched over to neutral for the QQQs when looking at the elder impulse system. On a momentum basis, though, the NASDAQ 100 is still negative. And we did bounce up off this red line, which is the 50 period moving average and came right back up to just about the 20 period moving average. So that's looking a little more healthy. Small caps were up less than half a percent and still continue to be range bound. We're still negative when looking at the elders impulse system for the small caps. We're below 50, but turning up at the RSI when looking at the Russell 2000 small caps, the trend is still positive longer term. The momentum is still negative. The mid caps are just a little bit underneath this pivot point, still above the moving averages, still have a longer term uptrend. And they've switched over to neutral after being negative with the elders impulse system for the mid caps. Apple was up almost half a percent, but continues to be in a downtrend. Tesla is in a downtrend and fell 3.63%. It's just really having a lot of trouble these days. NVIDIA is still pretty much range bound right now. It was up 2.45% and still looking really solid. But after the earnings release and everybody, it became the cool thing to do and everybody's chasing it. It really hasn't been doing all that much. The FANG index still pretty much chopping sideways, still above the 50 period moving average, still seeing a longer term uptrend. The financial sector was up almost a percent and still looking pretty solid. And the dollar was up. And this could put some pressure on stocks. And we're seeing a golden cross here. Here's another chart longer term where we broke out above this long, word, long resistance level with the trend line. Now we're coming right back down to that point. Oil is continuing to go up and is in an uptrend. I'll also be covering this again in the intermarket analysis video. And this, because of the context, is a little bit more negative for the markets. And then when we look at the S&P 500 and compare it with the world, we're seeing the correlation really dropping off in the short term, flattening to starting to decline in the longer term correlation. We did go up with the 10-year yield. We were down with the 10-year based on price. 
Didn't seem to matter for stocks in Friday's session. Not really seeing any real improvement here with our growth to value ratios. The Qs to S&P are still declining and under the moving average, really showing some weakness with discretionary to the S&P. Large cap growth versus large cap value, it turned up, but it's still below the moving average. So the large caps are still not really showing a lot of strength. The mid caps and the small caps are showing weakness. We saw a bit of an improvement here. We crossed below the zero point with our 19-day <clears throat> exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio. Well, we came back above and closed above zero. So that's turning more positive. We never did go negative based on volume. So what's our outlook for Monday? There is going to be a total, total, total solar eclipse on Monday. We don't know if that's going to be relevant or not. I would pretty much put it in the I don't really care category, but there are some people that do read some things into this. Earnings season will begin this week. The banks are going to be reporting later on in the week, and that's going to kick off the major part of earnings season. Technicals are positive, but right now we're at a tipping point. You can see we're right on the pivots. We're above the 20-period moving average on the S&P, but we're at that point where the market could go in either direction. <clears throat> but since the bigger picture is still positive, that's why we're looking more positive right now. There will be no economic reports on Monday, and we want to see if anything crazy is going to happen over the weekend geopolitically. <clears throat> Here's the economic calendar. We're going to get CPI on Wednesday. That's the other major report of the month. We're also going to be getting the meeting minutes from the FOMC. PPI is going to come out on Thursday. I think consumer sentiment is quite important. That'll be coming out on Friday. And then the week following, following will be retail sales. Here's the economic calendar for the upcoming week. I don't have anything marked for Monday because they don't see anything as important. Well, they don't. There's nothing for Monday or Tuesday on here. Seasonality. We are positive when it comes to April 8th. And it's also Monday. And that tends to be the most positive day of the week. So we have that going for us where the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ are all comfortably positive. And here is also showing some positivity when we look at the election year for the S&P 500. That's the green dash line. We're not sure where we're at when we're trying to match up with what happens seasonally. Monday is the most positive day of the week. Also, we see some strength potentially coming in here, but some choppiness before we get around to the 15th of April. Also showing how that we're really outperforming what would normally be happening whether it's an election year or not an election year, we're just skyrocketing above that. So we're deviating away from that quite a bit. April is one of the more positive months, and it's the last of the best six months. And then here's another new chart showing on a world basis, April tends to be the most positive month of the entire year. So we're not just looking at the U.S., we're looking globally. April also looks positive with the different ways that we measure it. We are up 11 out of 18 times, down 7 out of 18 times, and we're up 71.6% 71, 71 of the time with an average return of 1.5% for the month. So our warning signs, I don't know about the equity put call ratio, where we're at with that right now, but the parabolic SAR is negative. The bullish percent index for the S&P is below 70. It did tick up a little bit on Friday, but we're still not really showing any strength there. The bullish percent index for the NASDAQ 100 is below 50 and declining. So that is negative. The check and money flow, which was looking more positive, and the check and oscillator, which were looking more positive, they've now switched back over to looking more negative. The ultimate oscillator is negative, even though it did tick up. The Copic curve is negative. And we're looking at the growth to value ratios across all the different cap levels that we look at. They are weakening, even though they ticked up a little bit on Friday. And then we're keeping an eye on these negative divergences. Now, if, we, if our oscillators continue to decline, that will take care of the negative divergences, but that also means things are going to stay more negative. And then the other ones, some of these I'll cover in the weekend videos. The momentum for the NASDAQ 100 continues to be negative. Positive. The vortex is positive, but it has been weakening. However, it did tick up on Friday. Large cap growth is still looking pretty good right now. The financial sector is positive. So our conclusion, we are at a tipping point, but
But in the bigger context, we are still positive. And we're mixed more in the short term. We're still looking more mixed. And we're above overhead resistance in the intermediate term, but we continue to be positive where we are positive in the long term, but our longer term moving averages are still extreme positive. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. I will be posting all the various videos over the weekend. I hope you do have a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you in the next video.